Hey, what's up guys? It's Joe from Workbench and I want to show you guys a, a little trick I picked up off of a Creative Cow forum post a long time ago. Um, there wasn't much of a actual explanation on how to do it, just kind of a idea of how to what the concept was and so I had to kind of figure it out. But it lets you kind of blob things together, which is pretty cool. So as you can see, it does that. Uh, the only catch, I guess, at all is that you have to um, comp it over white. So you have to use it as a Luma mat later on. Um, if you want to put it over anything, so if you want to actually have some sort of transparency behind it. So let me show you guys how this works. Let's make a new comp. And those settings are fine. Okay, I am going to double click. It's much easier to make that, to do that, to make a background, I think, and then use an old solid or whatever. Call that background. Always name your stuff. Don't ever forget that. Double click, oops, click off of there, double click here. We're gonna make a circle, set that back. All right, and these are all black. So anything you want to show up is gonna be black. I'm gonna duplicate, well, let me make this a little, a little bit smaller. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate. So we have two. All right, so here's the layer where all the magic happens. We're going to make a new adjustment layer. And we are going to add blur, fast blur. Crank that up. Uh, the amount of blur you have is going to directly relate to how much the, uh, the kind of blobs um, blob together, <laughs> I guess you'd call it and how far away they have to be before they start to um, actually blob up. All right, so click repeat edge pixels so we don't get any weirdness around the edges over here. And then the next thing we're gonna add, um, you can do this, it's kind of like a threshold, but we're kind of gonna do it as a, like a soft threshold so our edges don't get all aliased and weird. Um, so we're gonna do color correction exposure. And we're gonna put the exposure up. What we're gonna basically do is, as you can kind of see, is we're gonna drop these back to looking like circles but in reality um, the unseen part of this is that there's still kind of uh, gray parts that are that can overlap um, you'll see more, more more what I mean here in a minute uh, we're gonna change that we're gonna basically play with these numbers until they kind of become circles again I'm gonna have to move them apart a little bit so you can see There we go. All right, and then often I'll add a levels bit uh, on the back end a little bit. So just to bring those blacks back in and sharpen them up a little bit. So you can see now we're almost to where we were, but the bounds extends just a little bit out. Now what happens here is that when this layer's off, you can kind of, you'll see, um, not that layer, when these other effects are off, you can see that while this covers up that gray, the rest of the gray at a certain point is clipped off. But when you move these together, these start to become enough that they'll become black in our once our uh, exposure and levels attack them, so that they blob together. Once the grays go together. They kind of do that. Normally, I'll also set these uh, these layers like 50%. If you do that, they'll get pretty much exactly accurate to the original shape. Um, so then, when you move them around, they'll still blob together. So that's how you do that. Um, if you want to do something a little bit more complicated, let's say like you have a logo. As you can see, it'll blob itself and all that kind of stuff. We're going to turn this off for a second. All right, so I'm going to shrink this down. All right, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to make it 50% opaque. Move that over. All right, this is where you have to play a little bit. So what's going to happen is this, cause this is going to get all weird. We have the blur really high for this size of an object. Um, so we're going to turn these other two off so you can kind of see what's happening. So we want even just a little bit of blur will still make this effect work. So what we're going to do is test. I'm going to click this and I'm going to convert or create shapes from vector layer. 
So now you can kind of see what that, uh, what that looks like. We're going to drag this back down, get rid of that. So now you can kind of click on it and still see how it fits in this shape. Um, so what we're going to do is there's some other stuff you can do here. So we can turn this down so you can see now we want to get it to where it's basically inside of here. Um, this is going to be a little funky. You might have to actually mat that out if you were going to do it or whatever, or take the shape and actually modify it. But here's what we're going to do. So as you can see, when we move this around, that still blobs together just like we want. So we're going to take this, duplicate it, put it above our adjustment layer, make it back to 100%. So we're just covering the top with a perfect uh, reproduction of our logo. And then we're going to take the shape, move it in, and you can see it still blobs together. It's not exactly, like you're still going to have like a kind of a weird thing here just because it's it doesn't fit that exact shape, but it still works. It works enough so that a quick pass kind of lets a blob still. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to post a project file of this so that you guys can take it, play with it. You already have a scene set up so that you can do whatever you want with it. Um, all you have to do is have a black shape and... Just play around. Thank you for watching this. I'm Joe from Workbench, and uh, keep following us on workbench.tv for more great tutorials, freebies, uh, scripts, and all sorts of stuff. Thanks, guys. Bye.